last week on the season. We've beat a lot of SEC teams, but Arkansas isn't one of them. I have to be able to be focused enough to do my job over and over and over again because the SEC road game, it comes down to three or four plays. Mag Brown. That's a funny guy. Like, you see him at practice, very energetic. Oh! Seven years ago, it started up due to one of my good friend's dad who um, ended up passing away from ALS. We originally wanted to make some money for him to have a bucket list. That's why we're doing this. We're trying to raise money for research. Thank you so much. $12,587.39. For this, for this one. Coach, I'm going to hold this and run it down, right? Kick to stay on fourth down if we don't get it. Second and one to give to Phillips. Phillips covering it up. He's to the end zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss! Never mind. <laughs> Come on, baby. Scotty Phillips! Takes it in for the score, and the Rebels have taken the lead, haven't led since three to nothing. Get up! <laughs> Fail! Let's go! Ball! 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 Let's go! Let's go! So today I'm collecting socks for the homeless of uh, the Patterson Foot Locker. I thought this was a great idea and it's, it's turned out to be really good. You know, a bunch of people back home are, are supporting and collecting socks from the little kids' school and high school and uh, a bunch of sororities and fraternities are beginning to collect and a bunch of the Oxford locals are coming down and people are sending them from, from all over. Good to see you. I tried to bring you something for your project. Hey, I'm like, where did you? Where Oh uh, yeah, we moved to the, we moved to the grill since the rain. Them. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you. you. I'm very proud of yeah, you. Thank you. How you been? What up? Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. How are you? Good. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. Thank you so much. How are y'all? Yeah, we're making a lot of progress, actually. You know, I've always been to schools and reading to kids and mentoring kids, you know, but I wanted to reach out and do something different. And uh, SARS was kind of a main thing that shelters look for, you know, for the homeless. Told you I'd bring you some. <laughs> well, appreciate that, of Janice. Of course, Thank of course. You. Anything for y'all. You know, growing up, you know, I've always been uh, instilled by giving back to people because my mother was always like that. She has a good heart. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. How you yeah, doing? I'm doing good. Yes, doing sir. A little wet. I know. I appreciate you great coming thing, out. Great thing that you're doing yes, here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sucks. How's everything going? Man, good. How you doing? Good. Yeah, you good? Sir. You gonna be here again tomorrow? No, nah, we won't, but if I uh if you if you leave them up here, they'll give them to me if you want to leave them up I'll here. I'll leave them with Sherman. Okay, sounds good. That. It was a rainy day. That didn't stop people from bringing socks in. We've had a pretty good donation today. Probably over 40 or 50 people came in and donated. So it's been a very good day. Thank you, Rebel Nation. some great receivers does Ole Miss. A very athletic receiving group that is big, they're rangy, and they've got lots of guys that can blow the top off of the defense. Ole Miss has one of the most prolific offenses in the country. Unbelievable what this core of receivers for Ole Miss can do. Hey, let's get it going! The end zone, right corner, Metcalf calls it in. Touchdown, Ole Miss, DK Metcalf. Slings one over the middle, watch! He's got his second touchdown. He wants to throw and he's going deep. A.J. J. Brown is wide open. He makes the catch in the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Arthur Brown, that's a bad man. Arthur Brown. Brown, long throw up the seam on a dime. D.K. Metcalf, touchdown. You want to check out the receiver. That's Luke below. Max and wide out. That's NWO. Hello. No, no, no. I'm in the booth. The nasty wide outs, they are a group of guys that can single handedly take over a football game. NWO means to me is just freakish receivers, man. Receivers that we know we can count on to make big time plays and big time games for us. I'm a firm believer that we have the best receiving core in the nation. Just watching them make the plays that they make. This is incredible. I just think of like unbelievable catches. Demarcus Lodge twisting his body to catch that back shoulder fade. Has a man pass, is caught. Demarcus Lodge. DK, the first, when we played Florida State, his first game, he 
he tipped it to us at a touchdown. I'm like, oh man. Jump ball. I think they have the ability to build a player on Madden, and if we were going to build a player, I think you would build DK. Uh, that, that's what you would want him to look like. DK is, is a little longer and taller, but he reminds me of uh, the physique of Evander Holyfield. He just looks like he's chiseled out of stone. AJ is special to guys well, you know. He's going to make plays, he's going to make guys miss. So it's special when the ball's in his hands. And even as a coach, you've been around a lot of good players and seen a lot of good plays. But a couple of those, you're like, dang, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's impressive. While each member of the NWO competes for the most scores on the field, off the field, senior wide receiver Demarcus Lodge takes the cake in motivation and humor. Let's go! Oh, 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 oh. Toddy, ah. we can... Oh, oh! That is one of the most funniest guys ever. He's the loosest one out, out of all of us. Some Kool-Aid in there. What's the number one green you add to it? Yeah! That's my guy. You know, Lodge, uh, when I first came in, me and Lodge clicked right away. Hey, soon to be the best receiver in the country. Mark my word. He's an energy feeder, and, and the guys feed off that, and they love it. He's going to come out there. He's going to have fun, joke around. But when it's time to put the ball down and get serious, he's ready to play. For most, an injury would dampen the spirits. However, for Lodge, getting hurt was a way to continue to add his unique flavor to the team. This last spring, he was kind of what I call our sideline general. He had some injuries, and he just has the ability to bring a, a different kind of vibe, a different kind of excitement to the room. Well, at first I wasn't practicing uh, early in the spring, so I knew I had to bring something out and uh, get those guys going. So I thought, hey, I got a silly side, so why not just bring it all out naturally? So We just established we're going to be the first guys on touchdowns to go down and and do a funny celebration or just jump on whoever scores. So it ended up, if however long the touchdown was, me and him were running about 50 yards down the field right next to each other, just sprinting. Touchdown! Touchdown! I saw a different side of him this spring and just his excitement and, and his personality. And I'm excited to see that continue to grow and excited to see, you know, that same green flash in a red, red, white, and blue jersey this year, outrunning everybody to an end zone like he did this spring. Lodge's humor might be no shock to fellow Rebels, but hearing the teammate's voice on a TV broadcast might catch people off guard. Six, Here we go in five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. Up and, and we're go. working. AJ Brown joining us in the booth. Guy that used to play a little baseball as well. AJ, what's up, man? Nothing much. I'm glad to be here. Good to see you. Um, do you miss baseball? That's question number one. I have to be honest. I do. I do. I wish I'd play play here. You know. After your athletic career, mm -hmm. what do you want to do? Sports broadcaster. Yeah, I would love to do that. You know, uh, that was my first experience of me really just being behind the mic like that, and uh, I loved it. NFL draft last night, round one. What's it like watching that draft? but maybe allowing yourself to dream a little bit too. Yeah, I think about it. I think about it, but I just try to stay focused on what I'm doing now. So I don't try to let it go to my head. I think he'd be good at whatever he chooses to do because not only is he talented, he's just got that smile. And anytime you enjoy what you're doing, I think uh, I think it will really come out. I was taking pictures and everything. I'm like, like this is what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's like the funnest thing ever. <laughs> you said that was fun? Yeah. I really want to do like a football game or something like that, but baseball is fine. You know, I want to be like on the field talking, you know, reporting. And um, I loved it, so I think that's what I want to do for real after after my career. So I want to do this for the rest of my life. I mean, like the football, baseball, even today, I won't hesitate. That's not that's not a job. You know, that's something I love to do. While AJ's future plans will keep him around sports indefinitely. The third member of the NWO knows one day he will trade his cleats for a cleaver. Did you know that DK Metcalf wanted to be a cook? No, I didn't. <laughs> I did it. He's a cook? Like a... I did not. I will not let him cook for me. I like, like a cook? Oh, <laughs> not another. <laughs> I used to live with DK, and he never cooked at our house before. 
Well, they're scared to eat my food. I send them pictures of my cooking all the time, then they always have some criticism to say. DK and I are gonna have a cook-off here sometime this year. We were meant to do it last year and it didn't get done, but that's coming. Did you guys know that today is the cook-off between DK Metcalf and Coach Longbottom? Really? Yes. Are you sure DK's just not talking? Probably can cook. Hey, because we had a steak some longer before. They were pretty good. Well, with Coach Longo, I expect nothing but the best. He's a perfectionist, so I expect that same thing with his cooking. Uh, with DK, you know, he's kind of a wild card. Have you ever eaten DK's food before? I have. He dropped off a couple trinkets from his his class or wherever he was cooking. They were, I won't tell him, but admittedly, they were phenomenal. We, we're trying to keep it a little secretive so, you know, there won't be no uh, biased opinions. You know, in the, but everybody knows I got the best dish, though. All right, DK, let's see what we got. Oh, you uh, take that bite. I don't need no, no flavors. <laughs> Separate <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Wipe that off. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so they're both, they're both very good. This one right here just has more flavor. I like this one. I was a little nervous though. Um, I thought Coach Colombo had a little flavors in his back pocket that I ain't know about, but you know, I just, you know, depending on my flavors and you know my cooking, pulled out the dog. The NWO has been a pillar of the offensive success over the last two years, but unfortunately, this season, they will have to finish without one of their founding members. Uh, injuries, DK Metcalf. He hurt his neck. It's a little bit more serious than we thought, and um, he'll he'll be done for the season. Your brother, neck injury. Yeah. You uh, give us some thoughts on that. Where are you coming from? And uh, I don't even want to get emotional, honestly. Uh, with that, I mean, tremendous player you know, suffered suffered that. And honestly, he doesn't deserve that, especially of everything he's been through. And, how hard he's worked this offseason, how we worked this offseason, and, and just. We're still looking to make sure that we uh, have the very best care and everything for him, um, but I, it's not a long-term issue, it's just, uh, but but it is gonna be one we'll be, he'll be done for the season. Coach always said, have the uh, next man up mentality, so K went down, uh, wishing the best, hated for him, but uh, I always have the next man up mentality, so I just gotta step up, have big shoes to fill. Well, uh, Coach Luke, you know, Coach Longo, Coach Peeler, they all came and saw me at the hospital. Today I got the news and you know, I, I still feel like I'm part of the team. And that's, that's real special to me. It says a lot about you know, the type of people that they are off the field. And um, one thing that I thought about when I got the news was, did I do everything? Did I have fun while I was doing it? And I did, and I was just going to come back and tell uh, my teammates that don't take anything for granted, <laughs> even practice. <laughs> you see, he, he got a lot of juice now, so. <laughs> Stop, dude, you still can't do it. <laughs> you still can't do it. Yeah, uh. One dog is still my dog, and you know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna never change, no matter what. No. Is it too long? <laughs> <laughs> you good? Oh, yeah, we got to go. Yep, they get it, man. Come on, man. You want to get on the camera? You messed up, bro. Thank you. So, Back in the boat. It always a good day to be in the boat. I know you heard that one before. Good work, good work, good work. All day long. Moment of truth, hands inside, pad level, let's go. Do the little things, bro. Do the little things. Hey, play every play like it's your last, bro. You never know when it's your last play. And I just I just want y'all to know that there's no other place I would rather be than standing right here with you guys for 33 more days. I want you to go out there and communicate. Every snap you communicate. You play with your eyes, and then you play downhill, and you be physical. I don't care if it's 10 to 3 or 37 to 33, we don't care. We find a way to get it done together. But you find a way to dig down deep one more time. The Ole Miss and Auburn matchup featured two teams seemingly headed in opposite directions. The Tigers had been a top 10 team in the early goings of the season, but arrived in Oxford on a two-game skid. The Rebels, however, were enjoying a win streak 
including a dramatic come-from-behind victory on the road last Saturday at Arkansas. Hey, let's go, Latin, let's go, baby, let's get it. Come on now. He'll keep it here, Q. Out to the sideline, and he is right at the sticks and pass for a first down. Looks to throw in the pocket, plenty of time. A hitch route, caught at the 45 of Auburn between the right seam and the hash by DeMarcus Lodge, and he pushes three or four Auburn guys inside the 40 to the 39, a 14-yard gain, first down Ole Miss. Hand off to Scotty Phillips, left side. He breaks clear, the 35-30. Ooh, slips on a cut and falls at the 28-yard line, but he will have 11 and another Rebel first in. Hey, great job, great protection. If we get our hands in them, we're going to be fine, you got it? They're sucking wind right now. That's going to be on the game. Right, they're tired. Just keep going, keep going. Great job. Low throw, but incomplete. A solid series run by Ta'amu, but it stalls shy of the red zone. This would tie his career long, which he hit against LSU. And it was blocked. Marlon Davidson. The Auburn Tigers with their fifth block kick of the season. This has been a strength for Gus Malzahn's special teams unit. The blocked kick would not only give the Tigers the ball, but also the momentum they so desperately needed. Here's Whitlow. Wow, what patience there by Jatarvius Whitlow. Excellent run inside the Ole Miss 40. Third down and long for Auburn. Blitz from Ole Miss. Left side throw, a little high, but it is caught by Slayton. Third and goal on the road on a two-game losing streak. Trying to get the first strike. Dumps it off for Whitlow, and the Tigers take the lead. The Rebel offense, led by senior Jordan Ta'amu, is among the most prolific in Ole Miss history and is well on its way to earning sole status of that distinction. But in the first 30 minutes of this contest, offensive firepower was replaced by frustration. Fires toward the end zone to Knox. Knox makes the catch at the two. Did he stay in bounds or not? What an effort. They're going to say no. no. There's the snap to Dalmo. Here comes Auburn. They give pressure. Jordan's in trouble, and he's going to be tackled. The Rebels will make a decision That's on the end fourth of the first and quarter. about a half a yard. I mean, we got to have great pad level. Watch for linebackers. Hey, watch for linebackers running through now. Watch for linebackers running through. They will run the play. And Phillips fighting for the yardage. Where will they spot him? They're going to bring the sticks out. Auburn ball. One inch. Here we go, D, let's play, let's play. Good penetration. Up front, Ole Miss getting the stop with Jalen Julius. Stidham runs to his right, fires downfield through behind the receiver. What a play. Excellent penetration by Ken Webster. He handed off to Whitlow, he works straight ahead, and he's grabbed and dropped. Hand off is to that man, Shivers, and Shivers is in trouble. This time, Rebels read that nicely. Charles Wiley here. Wrapped up by Benito Jones. 14th play of this Auburn drive. Stidham with time. End zone. Looking for Swartz, and he could not find him. Pushed one to the right on his last kick. This one good inside the right upright. Good job, D. Way to fight, D. Way to fight. So at the break, it's going to be Auburn 10 and Ole Miss 6. Tight score going into halftime, really back and forth first half. What do you think? You know, they're really good on defense. We need to score touchdowns when we get in the red zone. We had three opportunities. I missed a blocked field goal and two majors. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. And Auburn will have the ball to start the second half with a four-point advantage on Matt Luke's Ole Miss Rebels. Over the middle, Seth Williams, the true freshman. Into the red zone for Auburn. They'll snap and go right here in the handoff straight ahead. Touchdown, Malik Miller. And Auburn extends the lead to 17-6 to six with 12.07 to go in the third quarter. Here's A.J. Brown on the catch and run. They still got two-thirds of their nasty wideouts, and A.J. Brown with a couple of long catches and runs for this Ole Miss offense today. Brown, thank you! From the 25, middle of the field, a 35-yard field goal now for Luke Logan. Although the Rebels didn't match the touchdown, the Logan field goal would bring them within eight, with plenty of football remaining. Third down for Stidham. Whitlow 
A lot of space for Booby Whitlow. Trying to turn on the Jets. Still on his feet. He lost the football. It's recovered in the end zone by Anthony Schwartz. It's a touchdown for the Tigers. Let's go right down the field now. Right down the field. Let's go get him. Come on. Only 2.31 to play. Auburn leads 31-9. The Rebels have it at the Auburn 12 with a third down and nine. Garmu takes the snap. Auburn with an offside blitz. Fires near side. Got Brown. Catches the five. Makes one man miss. Takes it in the end zone. Touchdown. Ole Miss. My guess is that you will be watching him play in the NFL and Major League Baseball. You, you, you think at some point professionally he's going to yeah. play something. The onside kick recovery would seal the Rebels' fate for the game and hand the Auburn Tigers the ever-so-precious SEC road win. I'm hurt. I know you're hurt. I'll say this. Um, you had opportunities and we didn't score in the red zone. That, that's the story of the game. We have we have four games to go. You have we have an open date to go get healthy, and we got four games left. We got 33 days left to go together. And and you're good enough to win every single one of them that you play. And you're good enough to win that one. So keep your head up, stick together. No matter what happens, we're in this thing together. Y'all remember that. Y'all come together. Let's finish this thing the right way. We got 33 days left together. Let's make the best of them. All right, family on three. One, two, three. I think the story of the day was pretty obvious. Um, we got to find a way to get it in. You know, it does get tough against a good defense, but we got to find ways. That's our job as coaches to find ways to get it, get it in the end zone. Um, thought our players played hard, defense played hard, uh, but uh, proud of the way that they fought and gave us an opportunity to win this football game. You don't replace DK Metcalf, and uh, it was great to see him before the game. And, and he, he's so uh, he cares and he's involved. DK just missing him. Um, it's a tremendous loss for us, but uh, the next guy got to step up. Take this, learn from it, and go win the next four. That's, that's what we're focused on right now, winning the next four. 